Strawberries are seasonal during this time and since Christmas is around the corner, we tend to indulge in sweets. So today, I'm going to show you my version of Swiss roll cake using strawberries. So let's start with cooking the strawberries first. I have around 15 strawberries that I've chopped roughly. I'm going to add them in this pan. Next into the pan, I'm going to add 5 teaspoons of caster sugar. Also, 2 tablespoons of water. Mix all these ingredients and let this cook on slow flame. While the strawberries are cooking, let's make the cake mix. I have 1 1 4 cup of self-raising flour, 2 tablespoons of icing sugar, half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of soda. Let's sift these ingredients. Let's add in all the wet ingredients now. I have 300 grams of condensed milk. Next, I'm going to add in 80 ml of melted butter. Also, 1 teaspoon of vanilla essence. Let's lightly mix this mixture. I'm just going to leave the mixture like this for 5 minutes. Meanwhile, let's check on the strawberries. 5 minutes are up. Let's whisk this batter. Into this, I'm going to add 2 to 3 tablespoons of water. This batter is ready. I have greased and lined a tray with parchment paper here. Into this, I'm going to pour in the batter. Quickly spread the batter all over the tray and now this is ready to go in a preheated oven at 210 degrees for 8 minutes. The cake is beautifully baked. Let's keep this aside and now we have to work very quickly. So on a napkin, I'm going to dust some icing sugar. Just run the knife through the edges of the cake just in case if it's stuck from somewhere and now let's flip the tray on this napkin. Dust some more icing sugar over the cake. You could even use powdered sugar. Now using the napkin, roll the cake. Let the napkin roll with the cake so in case of any steam or condensing of water, it will get absorbed by the napkin. Let's keep this for 8 to 10 minutes just like this. The strawberries are nicely cooked and the water is also evaporated and at this point, I'm going to squeeze in a few drops of lemon juice. And now, let's get this off the flame and let it cool down completely. Let's quickly unroll the cake. Let's spread the strawberry layer. And next, Let's spread a whipped cream layer. And now let's carefully roll this cake again. Just push it with the help of the napkin. Refrigerate the whole cake for 30 minutes before cutting.
Let's see how to make cinnamon rolls. Let's start with making the bread bit. I'm going to start with some warm milk and some instant yeast. The best part about using instant yeast is that you don't have to wait for it to bloom or anything. Next, I'm adding in castor sugar. You can also use powdered sugar made at home or just regular sugar. Let's mix this with a spatula. And next, I'm adding in a little bit of yogurt for some softness. All-purpose flour into this along with salt. Let's mix it up with a spatula first so that my hands remain nice and clean. Once it all comes together, switch over to your hands. I'm going to drop it on the counter so that I can knead it properly. This is quite a sticky dough, so it might stick to your hands at first, but then it should release after kneading it for 5 minutes. Just use your spatula and release it. And it will stop sticking to your worktop. Now the dough has come together. So I'm just going to flatten it a bit and add in some butter. This is going to make our dough extremely soft once we bake it. This looks like a lot of butter, but this is an enriched bread. So don't shy away from it. It's going to make your bread taste amazing. I'm trying not to touch the butter and I'm trying to enclose it into the dough. Now I will continue kneading till the butter is completely incorporated. You'll know that your dough is ready when it starts releasing from the work surface. As you can see, it is not sticking at all to the surface or my hands anymore. Let me show you how to check whether it's completely done. Just pinch it from two sides very close to each other and pull it up. You should be able to pull it up into a thin sheet and you should be able to see the light through it. This means it has passed the window pane test. Turn your dough into a ball, making sure that the top surface is completely smooth. Place it down on your work surface and cover it with the bowl that you used initially. Now we're going to let this rise till it doubles in size. This should take about an hour. It's been an hour and the dough has doubled in size. Time to knock this down. If the dough sticks to your counter, just use a bit of dry flour. Now we're going to roll this out into a rectangle. Just make sure there's a little bit of dry flour everywhere so that everything becomes mess free. Now using a rolling pin, I'm going to make this completely even. Time to spread some butter on it. I'm using salted butter. Just making sure this is completely soft. I'm going to add it over the dough and spread it using a palette knife. Make sure it's a thin layer of butter. So having an even rectangle will be very helpful here. You need just enough butter to cover the entire surface of the dough from one side. Time to fill this up with some cinnamony goodness. So in a big bowl, I'm going to add in brown sugar, cinnamon powder. I'm going to use my hands and mix this up. It's just easier this way because the next step is to sprinkle this on top of the butter. Don't be shy, use quite a bit of the filling. This is going to add a good sweetness to your cinnamon buns. We're going to press all of this using a rolling pin again. Dust everything off from your rolling pin if it sticks to it. It'll come off very easily. Now it's time to roll this over. I'm going to start pushing this from one end and roll it over itself. Make sure it's nice and tight. Our log is ready. Now it's time to cut this into smaller pieces. First, I will cut it into half and then I'll cut it into three equal portions. I like to keep them quite thick so that you get a nice sizable amount to eat when you bite into it. I'm going to use an oval dish and start placing the rolls. If your roll starts to unravel, don't worry. Just pull it and push it to the side so that there's no way that it can unravel anymore. Here's the last piece. Again, making sure that the seam is touching the side of my pan. I'm going to press this lightly from the top to make sure all of them are the same height. 
So because of all this butter, I am sure that this is not going to stick to my pan. But if you still feel like you want to play safe, you can add a little bit of butter at the bottom of your pan to make sure it comes out very easily. Now it's time to proof this for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, our cinnamon rolls have fluffed up properly and filled in all of those spaces in our pan. Now it's time to bake them. Usually breads are baked at around 200 degrees Celsius or more, but because our bread has so much sugar in it, we're going to bake it at a lower temperature so that when we bake it, it doesn't brown too much. We're going to bake this at 180 degrees Celsius for 12 to 18 minutes until it is nice and golden brown. While the cinnamon rolls are baking, let's make the glaze that will go on top of it. I'm starting with some icing sugar and about 2 tablespoons of warm milk, 1 tablespoon of melted butter and 1 eighth of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. The one that I have is extremely thick so I have it on my spoon here and I'm going to use the spoon to mix the glaze around. We'll let the cinnamon rolls cool for around 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll top it off with some glaze. So I'm just going to spoon over the glaze and it's going to drip off from all the sides. Merry Christmas! Let's bake some moist chocolate cupcakes. So let's start with weighing our dry ingredients. We need 100 grams of flour, all purpose, half teaspoon of baking soda, and three whole tablespoons of cocoa powder. Just sift it all together. We just take a whisk and mix it all together. We need 100 grams of sugar. You can use caster sugar, you can use granulated sugar, but a really fine one. You can just mix it up in a mixer and give it a whisk. All right, now next we go for the wet ingredients. We need 120 ml of regular milk, room temperature. Next we need 60 ml of oil, vegetable oil, something which doesn't have its own flavor, which is neutral so that it doesn't overpower when the cakes are out. All right, and finally, half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. So whisk it all together. All right, next. Now we add the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients in two batches. And just give it a nice stir. Now we add the second batch. Okay, so the batter will be of pouring consistency. I'll put a handful of chocolate chunks, rather chocolate chips in this. Some for the cupcakes, few for me, mm. and few for the camera. Okay, <laughs> next, we just give it a light stir. Basically, we want the chocolate chips to get mixed with the batter well. Okay, done. So, I'm going to pour it into this jug. You can also use an ice cream scooper for this. But I find the jug to be much more easier for me. Next, you just start pouring in the nine cupcake molds. I just can't wait for these cakes to get baked. Now these cakes will go for baking at 175 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Okay. So our cupcakes are ready. They are quite hot right now. But I'm too tempted to taste them. They are so soft. Okay, so I'm gonna just 
try look at that there's the gooey chocolate the chocolate chunks and look at this mm. or okay. we can make an entire video of me eating all of them but okay let's finish it off with some really good buttercream what i'm going to do is i'm going to just pull them off slowly and keep it on my board just to cool it off okay so i have 150 grams of soft unsalted butter it's very important to have unsalted butter and i have here around 250 grams of icing sugar with around 50 grams of cocoa powder you need to whip this for around 2 to 5 minutes till it is soft enough and it gets a little fluffy as well all right I'm adding cocoa powder and icing sugar in batches. Okay, this is my first batch. Now just stir it lightly. Otherwise, the cocoa powder and the icing sugar will just come flat on your face. This is my second batch. All right, cool. So I'm using this open star nozzle. You can use the any. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm putting this. Good enough. some chocolate shavings on top Christmas is special and today I'm going to show you a nice and delicious cake that is the orange cranberry cake I have a cup of plain flour here half a teaspoon of soda bicarb half a teaspoon of baking powder Let's keep this bowl aside and start mixing the wet ingredients. 200 grams of condensed milk, 2 tablespoons of butter at room temperature. This is unsalted butter. Half a cup of freshly squeezed orange juice. Otherwise, you can even take canned. Let's start whisking all these ingredients. slowly add in the dry ingredients i'm going to fold in half a cup of cranberries Take a grease and dusted bundt tin. Into this, I'm going to pour in the batter. The cake batter is ready to go in the cooker. I've already kept a pressure cooker to preheat. All I have done is put a ring at the bottom. So if you have a ring like this just place it at the bottom the cooker is absolutely empty there's no water no salt no nothing and then place your cake tin very carefully cover it 
and let it cook on low heat for around 30 minutes and make sure you don't put a wet valve. That is very very important because your cooker is absolutely empty. There is nothing besides the cake batter in it. So make sure you do not put the wet valve. Low heat, 30 minutes. Now since I have some time since the cake is baking, I am going to quickly mix two ingredients for the icing. It's really simple, a cup of icing sugar, 2 to 3 teaspoons of fresh cream. Whisk both these ingredients together. If you want a very strong flavor of the orange, you can add some orange essence or some zest into the icing as well. Just whisk this till you get a nice smooth icing. Let's keep this aside. Do not open the cooker before 30 minutes because your cake can cave in. 30 minutes are up. I'm going to open it now. It's beautifully done. Let's poke a skewer to check whether it's done all the way through. If it comes out dry, that means it's time to get it out. Take a knife and run it through the edges to separate the cake from the tin. Also in the center, flip the cake, the moment of truth, beautiful. Let this cool down for at least an hour or an hour and a half before you ice it. The cake has cooled down nicely, time to ice it. I have a few strawberries here. Decorate with a few sprinkles. Let's get started with a recipe for an irresistible chocolate tart. So the first step is to make the biscuit layer. So I have about 30 digestive biscuits here that are powdered and I've also melted 12 tablespoons of butter. And now I'm going to mix the two. Add in the butter. Don't add all of it at once. Give it a mix. Add the remaining amount of butter. Make sure you mix the butter and the biscuit powder very well. This biscuit layer is ready and I have a tart mold over here with a loose bottom. And now I'm going to line this with the biscuit mixture. And now what I'm going to do is spread this mixture evenly into the mold and make a thick border on the side. So push more amount of the mixture on the sides and now with the help of a steel bowl I'm going to smoothen the surface so start from the sides just keep pushing towards the edge of the mold just push with the steel bowl and also with your fingers keep flattening the edges simultaneously Make sure this is evenly spread on the base as well as on the borders. And now this goes into the refrigerator for about 30 minutes to set. While the tart base is setting, let's quickly make the chocolate filling. For that I've kept a pot of water to boil. And once the water starts to boil, I'm going to warm up some cream. Basically, I'm just going to double boil the cream. The water has come to a boil. 
Reduce the flame slightly and place the bowl of the cream over it. Let the cream warm up and keep stirring at all times. Once the cream is slightly warm, I'm going to add in the dark chocolate in it. So I've just roughly chopped up the dark chocolate compound. Keep stirring till the chocolate pieces melt. The chocolate pieces have nicely melted and now into this I am going to add in butter, also 2 tablespoons of powdered sugar. Let the butter melt properly. Everything is nicely melted and now I am going to turn off the flame and get this off the heat. Let this cool down slightly before you pour it over the base. So while this is cooling down, I am going to quickly get the base from the fridge. The base is nicely set. I just need a couple minutes for this chocolate filling to cool down. Time to pour this mixture into the base. Just swirl this around a little bit in case there are any air bubbles, just very lightly tap it. And now this goes back in the refrigerator to set for at least a good 2-3 to three hours. The start is beautifully set, just take a tin which has a flat top, place it over and very carefully just loosen the ring and it just comes out. Carefully pick it up. I have a few things to garnish the start. So first I am going to start with some strawberries. Just randomly place a few strawberries. I have some fresh figs here. They are in season right now. So I've just quartered them and randomly placed them as well. I have some white chocolate chips here. So just drop them randomly. Some mint leaves. Some almond flakes. And some pistachio flakes. 